I am a PhD researcher at the University of Rain in France uh, in the domain of uh, public law. And uh, my research paper is called the Digital Administrative Act. And I am happy to share it with you uh, at this doctoral consortium. Uh, so the present uh, PhD thesis in its second year of research the work is currently in the beginning of the writing phase, so that some preliminary, preliminary ideas and uh, conclusions may change later on. As uh, the main goal of research, I, I intend to find out how the implementation of artificial intelligence and other algorithmic systems in administrative decision making can be adapted to the civil law system theory of unilateral administrative act and to the European legislation um, while respecting the rights of administered citizens. Uh, this study is uh, predominantly of a legal nature. The application of AI in, in administrative procedure is examined from the perspective of law and legal theory. In order to achieve this objective, the author uses a number of legal research methodologies. So uh, a, sh a short uh, sketch of applied uh, research methodology. Uh, the thesis is based on the doctrine of French administrative law. The starting point are French public administra administrative legislation and the French theory of administrative unilateral act. The next step is uh, the emerging theory of the Digital Administrative Act in uh, French and foreign doctrine. Uh, comparative legal approach involves studying the legislation and jurisprudence of foreign countries, mainly from the civil law system, in the field of regulation of an administrative act involving AI. The most significant here is the German legislation and Italian jurisprudence. Uh, from the point of view of empirical approach, the most promising practices for introducing AI technologies into administrative procedures are investigated to better understand their operability in the public domain, as well as their compatibility with uh, legal theory requirements. Uh, from the point of view of analytical approach, the basic methods of legal reasoning are analyzed, the deductive inference on the basis of uh, which rule-based systems works, as well as uh, the inductive inference used by machine learning systems. The thematic outline of the PhD thesis uh, and the main issues it explores are determined uh, by the classical definition of an administrative act in French law, which can be reduced to a legal act which emanates from administrative authority and has the value of enforceable decision. In other words, uh, it is uh, the result of an intentional application of a legal syllogism to resolve a specific legal issue. Its uh, peculiarity is uh, the authoritative nature of the decision taken by the competent administrative authority, which is binding on citizens regardless of their consent. In addition, citizens often have no alternatives but to turn to state institutions for their needs, like uh, acquisition of permits, uh, benefits, licenses, etc. Uh, because of its binding nature and the need to ensure a certain level of guarantees against arbitrariness, the Administrative Act is subject to the principle of legality under control of the judge. Its uh, requirements reflect the process of adopting a unilateral administrative act which is a combination of both objective and subjective legal aspects. Uh, the former includes primarily the premises of legal syllogism, while the latter are related to the final decision and direct application of the law. And uh, I'll, I'll start my presentation by uh, objective aspects uh, and uh, legal syllogism in the administrative decision, uh, which started by law fighting by a public algorithm. The translation of administrative law norms into code language is required to interpret the inputs and legally qualify them for the purpose of adjudicating an administrative act. In the context of administrative law, two main approaches uh, to the coding uh, of administrative rules can be distinguished. Uh, the first approach is to directly mm, uh, 
translate uh, the legal norms into the language of a programming code on the basis of which the rule-based systems that embodies the public algorithm operates. In general, this type of reasoning is closer to individual administrative decisions, which are made based on the applicant, applicant's compliance with the requirements listed in the law. This model has a number of drawbacks, the main one being the lack of plasticity of expert systems. However, it's still the most widely used model in administrative law. Moreover, the principle of legal certainty and predictability of decisions is one of the main principles in administrative law and rule-based AI systems should remain a priority. Uh, it is worth noting that the current practice of uh, different countries uses not only the model where an existing normative act is translated into code. A number of countries are currently exploring the possibility of the adoption of legislative and regulatory acts at once in machine-readable form, parallel to the textual form, that is simultaneous approbation of their program expression. It is supposed that such a model could give public algorithms more legitimacy in uh, their interpretation of the law. Uh, the second approach involves uh, the use of machine learning systems that based on the learning sample, for example, analysis of administrative files with predictable results on them, could themselves uh, make decisions similar to those made by a human agent. Uh, rules uh, formulated by AI itself based on correlations could be said to reflect the legal rules, standards, and principles of law applied in making the category of administrative act. In such a way, machine learning algorithms could be used as a risk assessment, predictive, and decision support tools. At the same time, decisions uh, made by machine learning uh, algorithms are not transparent and therefore unpredictable and often, often unexplainable, albeit the fact that the explainability and comprehensibility of algorithmic administrative decisions is one of the fundamental principles of French administrative law, in particular due to the right of concerned citizens to obtain communication of the rules defining the algorithmic processing. On this account, the French Constitutional Council has effectively banned the use of algorithms that can evolve and change their own logic and in administrative decision making. Uh, next, we'll examine uh, a fact finding stage uh, and the main issue addressed in the question of where and how the AI algorithms will take input data for their preparation of draft administrative decisions. As there are primarily individual administrative acts, the main inputs are the documents provided by the applicants. In this context, the digital identity of citizens plays here a major role and allows for the acquisition and verification of a considerable amount of data required for decision-making. At the same time, it carries with it a treat to individual rights and freedoms. In France, uh, the first attempt to create a centralized data system called Safari uh, resulted in public censure and its rollback. This is why a new platform, France Connect, is now being established on the basis of the principle of decentralized data storage. Another important source of input data is the data flow between different authorities and even, even corporations. The missing data could presumably be obtained from scans of doc documents provided by the applicant, information from which could be extracted by machine learning algorithms that could also verify their uh, authenticity. As far as the administrative regulatory acts are concerned, the use and analysis of public big data is promising to determine the optimal regulations in the various areas, such as urbanism, transport systems, the education systems, in particular to inform the administration about a need for a new act. But uh, administrative decision is not just limited by objective uh, requirements, objective aspects, but it, it, is, it has also some uh, subjective aspects, uh, which is concerning the hu human participation in the um, decision making. The first of them is the aspect of will. And, and in the civil law system, an administrative act, like any legal act, is an expression of will. That is, is uh, expressed through the intention to produce a legal effect. 
in the case of the implementation of AI in the automated adoption of administrative acts, the question arises as to whose will the algorithm express and whether they express it at all, since the AI itself does not possess consciousness and its own will. In the study, the following concept of algorithmic will is presented uh, within a legal act, administrative will can be conditionally divided into internal uh, so, or the intention to adopt an administrative act and the external or the volition itself, the explicit expression of the intention. In this case, uh, the source of the intentional will is uh, the state which has incorporated the intention in the text of, of the law and the public administration, which acts in pursuance of this law. The AI algorithm is given the role of expressing the external will, which makes the kind of agent that acts according to the will on behalf and in the interest of the administration that implemented it. Therefore, uh, the active participation of the administration in uh, the development of an algorithm is particularly important in order to convey the legal will as precisely as possible in the lines of code. Thus, uh, the process of shaping the administrative will moves from the adoption of the administrative act to the, to the development and the adoption of uh, the public algorithm designed to express it. Uh, and from the point of view of other uh, subjective aspect, uh, aspect of discretion in digital administrative act, the non-discretionary nature of an administrative act is uh, the most common and most sensible of the criteria that determine the admissibility of AI in automated administrative decision-making. Uh, Non-discretionary decisions, uh, such as the issuance of certificates and permits, uh, which imply an obligation on the administration to adopt an administrative act, if the factual circumstances meet the legal requirements, uh, can be quite successfully fully automated, which would significantly speed up their adoption and uh, relieve uh, civil servants from a routine work. At the same time, uh, discretionary decisions where the decision-making body is authorized to assess the appropriateness of a particular outcome and where several compliant decisions are possible cannot be fully automated due to the uncertainty inherent in them. However, the problem is that the line between discretionary and non-discretionary acts is often not clear. There are only a small number of administrative acts whose adoption is conditional on the existence of unambiguous or numerically expressed facts. A certain amount of discretion can be contained in uh, an amb ambiguous term, like uh, reasonable periods of case study, or the right to an agent's assessment of legal facts, like interaction into French society, integration into French society uh, to get the French citizenship. Uh, the study argues that the totality of administrative acts cannot be binned into discretionary and non-discretionary categories. Rather, it can be argued that there is a certain degree of discretion in the adoption of each individual administrative act, the zero point of which is a fully bound administrative act that is strictly and unambiguously regulated by law and devoid of any evaluation. A greater degree of discretion implies a greater degree of ambiguity and variability in the legal facts uh, governing the decision, as well as the decision itself. Consequently, the greater the degree of discretion of the act to be taken, the more difficult it is for the AI system to model its adoption, and the less decisive a role in decision-making it can be given. Uh, thus, the concept of uh, the degree of participation of algorithms in administrative decision-making procedure can be represented as ratio of two axes. The higher the discretionary nature of the administrative act, the less significant the role of the algorithm can be in it. Moreover, depending on the degree of discretionality of the act to be taken, uh, the preferred technology of AI changes uh, accordingly from rule-based system to machine learning algorithms, 
used by administrations in the presence of wide discretion as a decision support tool, not binding this administration in any way. Between two examples, countless administrative acts can be identified as well as combination of different kinds of AI systems optimal for their adoption. At the same time, the participation of a human agent in the adoption of an algorithmic administrative act cannot be completely ruled out. It is a necessary guarantee for its fairness and individualization, as well as respect for citizens' rights. Depending on the degree of algorithmization of the decision, one can imagine many types of such participation, like monitoring automated decisions, considering complaints against them, choosing one option from several offered, finalizing a half-finished administrative act, etc. However, the human agent may be influenced by a machine which he perceives as a source of objective information that defines his decision and whose principles of functioning are incomprehensible. In the context of discretionary acts, such influence can lead to the act being declared unlawful and judicially endued, as it must be decided independently by a competent person. In order to avoid such a situation, it is recommended to pay more attention to the training of public agents in informatics, up to including the official authorization to work with algorithms. Uh, so I thank you for your attention. Uh, I, I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much, Alexander. Uh, I have a first question from Mikhail. Um, are you going to take into account the case law of administrative courts as constraint uh, on administrative decision making? Uh, in fact, uh, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, I'm not very sure now because uh, as for French uh, jurisprudence, the decisions is uh, very rarely motivated uh, uh, the decisions of uh, French uh, admi administrative um, court uh, be because, because of, uh, and, and so it, it will be um, uh, difficult to extract a knowledge and uh, to construct administrative act uh, from, a from an administrative jurisprudence, but uh, the some con con concepts can be extracted from this jurisprudence. Uh, I'm not still study this idea, but I will look at it anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also have a comment by Monica here. Uh, she stated, it's also interesting to see the use of the article 22 of GDPR used in the case law in Italy. And she sees uh, a case law, you may find it in the chat. Uh, in the case of automatic decision system applied to the public selection of teachers in the Italy Italian school system of uh, the ministry. Uh, very interesting uh, thesis, she states also. Okay. Um, yes, I'm glad. Yes, uh, if I can answer the question here. Uh, yes, I have studied this article of GDPR and uh, um, precisely in the context of uh, French law, uh, like uh, French law on uh, personal data, which has been adopted uh, in uh, after the adoption of GDPR, uh, which now uh, legalize the individual administrative decisions uh, taken by administrative authorities. But uh, the this criteria, like individual administrative decision, is uh, not uh, much uh, uh, correct uh, for, for a legalization because there are discretionary administrative de individual decisions who can't be now uh, well automated. And uh, for example, we could take another decision of uh, Consiglio di Stato uh, it, 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 from Italy, uh, who uh, were the... Um, uh, Consiglio di Stato uh, said that uh, it is um, it is much more relevant to automate the decision uh, to repetitive decisions, which cannot uh, concern the 
discretionary qualification of facts or choose between some opportunities. So uh, in, in Italy, it is also decided uh, to legalize some more the non-discretionary decisions. Thank, Thank you. So you. Thank you. Um, I also have another question here. Um, how do no, it, it is the same. So I'm happy. Thank you so much for the answer. Okay, thank you, Monica. Uh, I have another one. Uh, how does French law deal with the gray area and the distinction between discretionary and non-discretionary decisions from the administration? If we include AI system to help make administrative decisions, do you think a specific regulation should apply or should we rely on past more general solutions? In fact, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, the mm, previous version, not a version of this article, but a project of this this article uh, in the French uh, personal data protection law uh, has uh, proposed a formulation that the administrative decision can be automated if there is no um, ambiguity on the qualification of the facts or there is no ambiguity on the qualification of the law. So uh, in my opinion, it should be um, uh, very precisely qualificated uh, not to um, stop the implementation of more uh, sophisticated algorithmic systems, but um, to, uh, to make some guarantee of respect of civil rights. And uh, no, for, for, from this purpose, uh, the uh, Constitutional Council of uh, French Constitutional Council has uh, banned the use of uh, machine learning systems, and uh, I think that with uh, pr more progress in uh, artificial intelligence development, these uh, re rules can be revised. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think we have um, time for another one. Uh, um, it's very connected to the to the last one, but I think it's, it's uh, it has a, a little bit um, specification about uh, data uh, transfer between private actors and public actors. Um, you state in your paper that the use of analysis of uh, public big data to determine the optional regulation in various areas, such as urban needs, transport systems, and so on, is promising, in particular to inform the administration about uh, a need for a new act. Uh, how to regulate the access by the public administration to these databases? Uh, do you think that the public administration should have access to big data gathered by private actors like Uber and like in uh, the new events, uh, like the use of geolocalization data to control their compliance with social isolation measures to, during the pandemics? Hi, uh, thank you for the question. In fact, I've told uh, much more about a uh, public data, uh, so about data which is possessed already by the administration, uh, like uh, state administration has a lot a kind of lot of data uh, who is delivered by the citizens, by the applicants, by the internal informational exchange. And it was primarily this domain of data, but in perspective, the um, conclusion of some information exchange between uh, the private uh, actors can be concluded. Uh, for example, as I said, for uh, extraction of legal facts, now, uh, for, uh, for example, for to, um, to prove your residence, uh, to prove your residence place, your address, you can now use an option to have a confirmation from your electricity uh, contractor that you live in here. And it, it is automatically going as a proof of your uh, residence. So in the future, such, such a kind of uh, coordinates between uh, public and private uh, actors in the domain of data can be enforced, I guess. 